I've had a lot of people ask me how I made these wheels. I touched on it on one of my other videos, how I used a bucket and put the rim in there, poured the polyurethane around and then cut it on the lathe. But that way uses a lot of polyurethane and it's pretty pricey and it takes a while to cut all that off. Uh, my dad just made some wheels the other day and I decided to make a video of it. Um, he used some plaster Paris and put it around my wheel to get the basic shape of the wheel. Uh, so he had to use you know, less polyurethane. That's what you see in the video here. So to start off, he put a little bead of silicone around the edge that was going to be facing down uh, just to create a little bit of a seal so it doesn't leak a bunch of polyurethane out. Um, looking back, I'm not sure why he poured flange down. Seems like it would be a little easier to pour a flange up. I'm sure if you had a 3D printer, you could make a much better mold than this and you can make it whatever shape or size you want. Here's the polyurethane I used. It was Flex at 90 from a company called SRC. Um, good stuff, really strong. Haven't had any issues with it. Um, the only problem is you have to jam. It has a, a work time of only three minutes. So it's, I mean, really after a minute, it's almost too thick to pour. And you can actually cut it on a lathe after an hour and a half. It's done curing. Uh, it's a little bit pricey, but totally worth it. So it makes it easier to pour if you use some type of funnel upside down on the top. Uh, he just used a cheap pot um, and taped it upside down so you don't get any polyurethane inside the rim. Uh, then he just put the whole piece in there, um, kind of centered it, and then you just pour in between the rim and the mold. Uh, he used blue dye. Uh, they have several different colors. Uh, the weird thing that we noticed after um, we use this blue is it actually turns green in the sun so keep that in mind so you start by pouring in resin and then you add in the color um, this color was kind of tricky to get out of there we had to use a screw to kind of pull some of it out you only need a few drops of it then you mix that in uh, once that's all mixed up then you add in the hardener uh, you have to be careful because once you add that hardener um, you only have about 10 seconds to mix it up and you got to start pouring quickly and so we just took a guess at about one liter of each. It's one to one mixture on parts A and B. Uh, so we had about two liters of total mixture. And that was pretty good for each of these wheels. Um, he was only making two wheels. Uh, he had made two previously and ran out of polyurethane. So there goes in the hardener and he's going to mix it quickly for about 10 seconds and he spilled it all over the place. And yeah, this part would have been much easier if it was flipped over and he poured it flange. Uh, so I'm not sure why he went flange down. Uh, it kind of seems like a no brainer now that I think about it. Uh, but you can see it's already kind of thickening up, um, so you just kind of jam and just try, I mean it's going to spill, um, but we used this two liters and there was a little bit left over. I wouldn't recommend pouring this in two, um, two different pours. But he poured that in there, I told him not to do it uh, because you'll see when it's done, there's a little separation. Um, it's not that big of a deal. I have separations on, I think, two of my wheels and it, it hasn't gotten any worse. Uh, it doesn't do anything bad. It just kind of looks, kind of looks sloppy. And I'm pushing down on the pot and I figured it was, at this point, it was okay to lift my hand up. But as soon as I lifted it, the pot kind of stuck to my thumb and pulled up. So some of the polyurethane went underneath the rim. And I don't know if you can see, but the level dropped right there. So we ended up having to mix a little bit more on the, <clears throat> on the second pour for the second wheel. 
and just kind of finish this one. And after he did the wheel, you'll see later in the video, there is a little bit of a separation. And I think it was this wheel um, from that little instance there. Yeah, you can see the level dropped a little bit there. So uh, he just topped it off on the next pour. One of the issues with this polyurethane is it hardens so quickly, you can't really do anything about the air bubbles that you might get in it, uh, you have to pour it so quickly. Um, afterwards, he did have a couple air bubbles in there and we, we saw when when he put it on the lathe. Um, you'll see later in the video, I can, I'll point that out. Um, it doesn't, it's not a big deal. Mine have little air bubbles in it. it. You don't feel it when you're riding. It hasn't affected the wheel at all. So here we go with round two. Um, I held my fingers on this one for a little longer. It wasn't an issue this time. And it's tricky because you, you want to pour it quickly because it's hardening on you, but you also want to go slow because you don't want to get a bunch of air bubbles and an uneven pour. Um, this is where he topped it off, and I'll show you in the, the video later that there was a little bit of a separation in the wheel. I noticed when I was pouring my wheels in the buckets, um, if you put your hand on the bucket, it got pretty warm when it was setting. Um, not so much that it would burn you, but it's noticeably hot. So when I used the buckets for molds, I sprayed, I believe it was a silicone spray so that it wouldn't stick. And I didn't have any issues with it sticking. I basically flipped the bucket over and everything just fell right out. Um, this plaster Paris, was completely stuck to this. I don't know if any spray would help at all. Um, so it took him a while to just kind of rip this thing apart. Uh, he basically had to cut the, the pot off the top and just kind of hit it with a sledgehammer to, to break it up. It was actually really stuck to that board also below. They came out pretty good actually, pretty good looking. And he has a lot of stuff stuck to him, but that comes right off on the lathe. And I think this is the one that got a bunch of polyurethane that leaked out of the bottom, the first one that we poured. So uh, he took that off first. Um, just took a little bit of time, he cut Cut it a little bit, I think there's about an inch of it in there. So once he got through it, he was able to just get his hand in there and just pull that whole piece off. So my flange is about one inch by one inch. Um, haven't, I haven't had any issues with it. Um, I rarely derail and it's usually something seriously wrong with the rails or I hit some, you know, a rock or something. Um, it's really rare to, to derail with that flange, so, um, so he did the same, about one inch by one inch. Also, you want to make sure you have a little bit of an angle on your wheel, um, so that it's a, almost a cone shape. Uh, maybe, I think it's like three degrees is what you put on there. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but just a little bit of an angle so that the, the rail stays in the middle of the, tie, of the wheel, basically. Kind of like a, a real train wheel does. It's really that angle of the wheel that keeps you on the tracks, not so much the flange. The flange is just there as a secondary uh, to keep you from derailing, but it's really the, the shape of the wheel.
I really like this polyurethane though. I mean, I haven't used anything else but the Flex at 90, but I've had zero issues with it. Um, I mean, I've hit a lot of rocks, pieces of metal, um, tons of, of road crossings where you're on you know, gravel or uh, pavement um, and no issues at all. And for some reason in my videos, people always think my wheels are, are metal for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, I've tried metal wheels and it was horrible. It was super loud, um, really rough. Uh, with this polyurethane, it's just smooth. I mean, and I've also seen people, seen comments where people will say, oh, you need suspension. Uh, you really don't. <laughs> it's not bumpy at all. I mean, you're talking about rails that are really smooth. Even the worst old rails are really smooth with these wheels. So here he flipped it over. Um, now he's starting on the other side of the, the wheel. And he's making that three degree um, angle on the wheel. And uh, when you get up to the flange, you don't just make like a square flange. I mean, there's a little bit of a, a smoothness to the transition. And all this plaster of Paris that's left over on here just comes right off like you see in the video here. Uh, it just cuts right off, no problem. right there there's a little bit of a split in the wheel and I think that's from the two pours on the first wheel that we poured um, but it's not an issue I mean mine look like that too I think two of mine look like that it does have a, a little leftover air bubble there that you can see at the top it's not a big deal you won't feel that at all it'll wear down a little bit 
it'll be perfect. No big deal. 